What's up, YouTubers? So, if you haven't watched my previous video where I helped a guy kind of come up with a plan to weld studs on thicker plate, watch that. I'll put a link in the description. Anyways, what I have here and what I was thinking is I'm sitting around here putzing in the shop on a Saturday night, and I, I thought to myself, well, you know, I didn't do TIG for that video, and the reason was is he didn't have a TIG welder, so why cover TIG when he didn't have one? But my thought was, well, I have a TIG welder, and I'm kind of curious as to how the strength of TIG welds on these would compare to the flux core, the stick, and the MIG, and all of that. So that's what I did, is I welded on three bolts. The plate's a little bit thinner, this is 3 eighths. The angle iron edge that I welded on was thicker than that, but I'll be honest, it's not gonna make any difference. This weld here is a, a very small weld, so this is a little bit smaller than most of the other ones. This and this one are bigger welds. This one was run at higher amperage. This one I just basically put more filler in and ran similar amperage to this. I know that this isn't an apples to apples comparison, but I did weld only two sides of the bolt head just like in the previous test. Same deal there. So all I'm gonna do is a quick brake test and we will compare the numbers of this to the numbers of the other ones and see if there's any difference. Now I haven't done this test yet and my opinion is I doubt that the numbers are going to be higher than the other welds and the reason I say that is these are all smaller welds than like that MIG weld and that flux core weld that previously tested the best so I don't anticipate these being able to exceed the strength of those simply from the size of the weld perspective because this is more of a mechanical test than it is tensile strength or anything else. Well, with that said, let's break this. And I am gonna break them towards the face of the weld. Eighteen point four. You'll have to trust me on this because you can't see it. 18.6. And you know what, I'll zoom out so you guys can see. Well, you probably won't be able to see it, but yeah, of course you can't. It's too far out, that's all right. And that one was 13.8 here, that did save it, so 13.8, which being that this had the smallest weld out of any of the tests that I've done, not surprising. These two were up there almost at the highest strength out of all the tests, but we'll look at that real quick in a conclusion of this video. Quick little recap, the welds broke as expected, so the weld broke through the weld, it didn't basically peel off the bolt head. There is evidence of some penetration and fusion where the bolt head basically further back in the bolt head. The welds clean, no porosity, which again, all these things are expected with TIG. I mean, that's the benefit of TIG is that if something's going wrong, there's no question that you can see it and that you can make an adjustment versus with like flux core wire and MIG, when it's going wrong, you may or may not realize it at first. And once that welds down, you're pretty much, you know, screwed. I apologize for the massive pile of mess here. So you'll have to live with it, I guess. But yeah, so anyways, uh, the results of this are pretty much what I expected. The interesting thing to me, and this is a very small scale test, is that the two that I welded with bigger welds broke basically very close to one another and then as expected the one with the smallest weld out of all of them broke at the least amount of force and again this is a mechanical test more so than tensile strength so that was i guess not too unexpected and that's one of the reasons with tig that i like it is it's very repeatable because you have control over all the parameters everything from kind of your depth of fusion which TIG really doesn't have that much, but you can control that. You can control how much weld metal is there, 
all of those things, you just have ultimate control and you don't have issues with porosity and weld defects, et cetera. So doing a test like this, I think it, the end result is just going to be extremely consistent results. If I did 20 of these, I bet all of them would break within 2% of one another versus when you get into things like MIG and stick, depending, you know, it's very difficult to deposit exactly the same size weld consistently every time. So you're going to get a far uh, bigger variance in test results, I guess. But yeah, so these did not exceed the highest strength out of all the tests. However, both of the bigger, more suitable size welded studs or bolts did have really good numbers, again, as expected. But anyways, I thought I would share that with you because I was going to do this anyways, and I really wasn't planning on filming it. And I thought that, well, why not take you along for it just so a little extra information for you guys to digest like a late night taco from Taco Bell since it's pretty late already. Anyways, thanks for sticking around, guys. Till next time.